Hi everyone, this is Dr. Crad, and today I wanted to share a case with you, actually two cases, of a nice elderly patient with Marfan syndrome, glaucoma, and cataracts. I've been watching her for many years, and finally the cataracts got bad enough that she wanted surgery. Preoperatively, she didn't have any lens subluxation, but just a little phacodenesis and iridodenesis. She also has some ptosis of her eyelids and astigmatism. So my plan is to perform cataract surgery with femtosecond laser, create arcuate incisions, place either a CTR or CTS depending on if the IOL centers well, and finally to implant an eye dose to help treat her glaucoma. This is the first case. With my main incision, I widen the internal opening of the incision superiorly so that it will facilitate a more acute angle of approach since I want to hide the eye dose under the upper eyelid. The eye dose may allow her to get off of glaucoma drops completely and her eyelid ptosis will hopefully hide the eye dose stents. There are some tags with the laser so I carefully remove the capsulotomy. I want a very thorough hydrodissection in this case prior to spinning the cataract. Although I could probably rotate the lens after one fluid wave, spinning it may stress the zonules. So I hydrodissect and gently tap the lens prior to any attempt at spinning. I want the lens to spin freely. I want it to feel effortless. During phacoemulsification, emulsification, I try to remove the cataract with minimal zonular stress as well. With sculpting, the ratio of power to the speed of your hand movement needs to be high. I'm careful not to drag the cataract in the X, Y, or Z plane. Let the cataract melt in front of the phaco tip. When cracking, ensure that the cataract as a whole stays in the center, equal force in each direction so they cancel each other out. Watch the capsulorexis edge and make sure you're not shifting the cataract bag complex in one direction or another. If there's any asymmetric pressure created, it's better to apply it towards the area of zonular weakness. Fortunately, we're able to do all the lens cracking atraumatically, and that's verified by the capsulorexis remaining exactly where it started. After careful lens disassembly, emulsify all the nuclear material. Keep watching for decentration of the capsular bag or expansion of the zonular gap, which could indicate vitreous prolapse. Fortunately, quadrant removal is routine. With capsule tension rings, you want to put them as early as you need to, but as late as possible. Fortunately, her zonulopathy is not too horrible, and we haven't had to use capsule hooks or a CTS thus far. While waiting for my irrigation aspiration handpiece, I irrigate the cortex with BSS, flushing the cortex away from the capsular fornix because I think this could potentially preserve some of the zonular integrity compared to when just using the INA handpiece alone. I irrigate from both the main incision as well as the paracentesis. After the cortex is loosened, I proceed with the irrigation aspiration handpiece. I'm applying less vacuum than I usually do to try to remove the cortex slowly. I prefer to leave the cortex in the area of zonular weakness till the end. When removing the cortex, there can be traction on the zonules. So I like to take small strips of cortex at a time so the remaining cortex acts as a support for the capsular bag. Grabbing hold of large segments of cortex and then vacuuming it all at once is more likely to weaken the zonules further. Allow the INA handpiece to gently vacuum the cortex. Avoid pulling aggressively with your hand. I'm performing the aspiration very slowly as I want to watch that capsular fornix and see if it comes centrally along with the cortex. Here I'm performing some visco removal just to enhance my visibility. And I don't want to polish the posterior capsule with the IA tip. Instead, I'm going to irrigate into the capsule fornix to try to release any of these cortical strands that are still stuck. I'm generous with the amount that I flush the capsular fornix and I approach it from both sides, the main incision and the paracentesis. It's surprising sometimes to see how much material comes out. This is the lens material that will ultimately become a Sommerings ring down the road. So I very thoroughly irrigate it out. There, now it's clean. Now that the cataract is gone, 
The bag looks to be well centered. So I'm going to put a CTR in the bag followed by the lens and see how well it centers. For the surgeons out there, given what you see here, would you put a CTS for prophylaxis or would you just put a CTR given that the zonulopathy is not too bad? When placing a CTR, it's best to either insert it towards the area of zonular weakness or to hold one end of the CTR like I do with the Sinsky hook. And as you insert the CTR, manipulate the end of the CTR away from the capsular fornix so it doesn't push the bag away from the area of zonular weakness. Make sure that when you release the CTR ends that you're posterior to your capsular rexus. After this, I replenish some lost viscoelastic and then insert the lens. I chose to reduce the patient's corneal astigmatism with LRIs rather than putting a torque lens because with Marfan patients, if there's any lens subluxation down the road, you don't want to put a toric lens in that situation because it's going to change position. Rather, this is a monofocal lens and there are fenestrated haptics in which you could potentially suture the lens in position in the future, although I don't think it'll be needed in this patient. After the lens is in the bag, we move on to the glaucoma portion of the surgery. We're going to implant an eye dose into the anterior chamber angle. This will slowly release prostaglandin medication in the patient's eye over the next few years, hopefully. And we use a hands-free gonio prism. And you want to insert the barb of the eye dose with more pressure compared to a typical eye stent. You want that barb to capture the sclera, you need to dimple it in. It's good to see corneal folds potentially. I'm trying to angle it up as far as I can underneath the upper eyelid, but what's happening is the gonio prism is getting stuck with the eyelid speculum and the upper lid because this patient has a small eye, and so that's limiting my visibility far up. I check that the eye dose is secure. Although it looks like it's very close to the iris, at this point, some viscoelastic has escaped the anterior chamber, and so I think it's going to be in good position once the anterior chamber is back to its baseline depth. This patient has been on glaucoma medication for years, so I'm really hoping that this improves their quality of life by allowing them not to administer drops anymore. Now we're on to viscoelastic removal. The eye dose is staying stable as I am removing all the viscoelastic. And then I polish the anterior capsule a little bit with my INA tip. I hydrate my incisions. I ensure that the eye pressure is appropriate and that the incisions are watertight. Let me know if you would do anything differently. Don't worry, I won't take any offense, but leave your suggestions in the comment section below. The lens implant remains very well centered. The eye dose is in good position. We repeat the same process in the other eye. Here is the end of the surgery in the other eye where I do the same exact thing. I performed femtosecond cataract surgery with LRIs to reduce astigmatism. I carefully removed the cataract. I placed a CTR and the lens implant as well as the eye dose. Here is the patient after both surgeries. The eye dose is nicely tucked under the patient's eyelids. The vision in one eye is 20-25 plus. The vision in the other eye is 20-20. The eye pressure is excellent without any medication. The patient is, of course, thrilled with their vision. They were very nervous for the last 15-20 years about having cataract surgery due to the known potential complications associated with Marfan syndrome. I appreciate your attention. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.